The soul funk scene in Melbourne is massive. People love soul music. The soul funk scene's produced some really epic um, kind of legends, including the fabulous Carly Ortis, who's um, is part of Women of Soul, but also Clary Brown, Sasquatch, Hiatus Cody, pretty, pretty amazing. For Australia, Melbourne is the place to be for music, and that's where everybody um, seems to migrate. And I think what I've always really appreciated about Melbourne and why I moved here in the first place is the live scene. You know, just people here put on a great show, people perform regularly here, there's a lot of venues that support live artists and live music here um, and you know that's really really important and that's you know where we develop our craft, that's where we get our stage legs and you know I think that Melbourne Music Scene fosters that and, and really helps that grow so that's why I stayed. <laughs> Women of Soul started around four and a half years ago and it was a collaboration between myself and other soul vocalists so rather than have three bands at one show and having to have set breaks in between for the different bands to change over we decided to start a show where we'd have one band soul review style so we've got the same house band for the whole gig and it's one singer next singer so it's just a high energy show. I've been in Melbourne for a long time and I never really felt that I was part of a community as of singers. See, singers are always doing a gig so they don't get to see other singers' gigs and you have different band members through all your different bands and, but the, the singers are always busy with their own gigs so it's nice to all come together and, and do something all together. It's been really awesome fun. You get an opportunity to perform with other great female singers in Melbourne and it gives an opportunity for us to talk to each other and also contribute to the soul community in Melbourne. Women of Souls are a really unique project. No one else is kind of bringing women together for this kind of thing in this way. It's not competition. There's no, I sing like this. I think it's just embracing everyone's different individual voices. And it's, it's how the music industry should be. If everyone helped each other out. You get inspired by all the other women in the group. So when we do a show, it's really fantastic to watch them all from side stage and you get really amped up and really energised by them and the band and then you come out and do your thing and you're part of this beautiful whole but you're also bringing your own little contribution. So it's a really lovely thing to be part of, really exciting. Being a part of Women of Soul is so positive for not just Melbourne music but for soul music in Australia because all of these singers are, you know, renowned for their different bands and things that they do, but all of us coming together and supporting each other just helps to build the awareness of what we love. The emotion, um, the uninhibited expression that is soul music, um, it's a place where you can express pain and heartache. Although I have lots of different influences, I feel like soul music moves me in a special way. My background as a performer is really a lot of hairbrush in the mirror. Um, as a child I belted out a lot of Whitney Houston. Didn't really start singing on stage until I was about 25 or 26 really when I started playing with the perfections. Before that I was in kind of like a, I guess a dark wave rock band called um, the Lansbury's. I've been classically trained on the violin and piano and um, performing for as long as I can remember. My mum played the piano, she was incredible. She could play anything by ear. So she brought us up listening to lots of girl groups from the 60s. Uh, Shangri-Las were a favourite. We used to listen to lots of them. I started singing jazz. I studied at the Queensland Conservatorium of Music and jazz was my first love and my first passion. I did a lot of dance and acting as a kid um, and I fell into singing probably when I was around 21 um, and from that point I guess I was always into neo soul and new soul. My dad took me to see Billy Thorpe in a concert and it was me and my dad and a room full of bikies and he did a version of Summer Over the Rainbow and he stripped it back and did it really bluesy and soul and we looked around and there was all these bikies that were crying and I apparently, I don't remember this, but apparently I said to my dad, Dad, that's what I want to do, that's what I want to do. On the Women of Soul album, I really wanted to have a mix of genres to kind of really showcase and encapsulate the, the variety and the diversity of the Melbourne soul scene. So, for example, Mae Johnston's track is a real kind of um, deep funk tune. It is a bit sexy, it's a bit raw, and uh, it's a little bit outside the box, like the way I am as well. 
Christina Arnold's song is more on the garage kind of side of things, whereas Candice Monique's recording this you know, really beautiful, sweet, almost neo-soul sounding track. Um, and we didn't have any Northern, and I really wanted to have a Northern soul track on the album, which is why I chose the Jackie Moore song. I have composed a track for the album, which Lisa Faithful is singing, so I'm really excited about that. I actually was approached by Chelsea to sing a song that she'd written. I'm about to get married, so maybe that's why when Chelsea wrote it, she said to me, do you want to have a look at this song? And as soon as she showed it to me, I was like, I have to sing this song. I, you know, it's beautiful and it's called Accelerate. And it's all about that, that motion of a, you meet someone and then all of a sudden you're thrown into the deep end and it's all speed ahead. My song for the album is uh, a little bit inspired by an experience that we have as women where gentlemen will kind of come up and talk to you and touch you and not take no for an answer. And so my song's called Back It Up, Hands Off Me. <laughs> it's a little bit of an anthem to um, the, the gal who's getting harassed a little bit when she goes out to party. Well, this is the first song that I've written with, uh, with Jake Mason. Jake Mason from Cooking on Three Burners. Um, I've been friends with Jake for probably 20 years and we've never written a song together, just the two of us. It's called More Than a Mouthful and it's it's just about somebody uh, trying to be with me and um, not knowing how hard that is perhaps, that I'm quite a big, busy person who wants a lot. <laughs> well the title of my song on the album is a dead giveaway as to what the song is actually about. It's called My Beautifully Broken Heart and um, obviously it's about heartbreak, it's about a, you know, a recent breakup. Um, but it's also me reflecting on that and looking at the positives in that and looking at how as a person I you know, would have grown out of that. You know? So I think when you look at it as a, a broken heart is not necessarily a negative thing, a broken heart, you know, hopefully at some point you will be able to put those pieces back together in a better way, in a stronger way, so that's why you know, I call it a beautifully broken heart. My song on the album is called Whole Woman and it's my favourite song to sing at the moment. And the message is that what affects one part of a woman or a human being will affect the rest of them. It's a really personal song and I didn't think about it being political or think very critically about it when I wrote it. But as I've reflected on the song and every time I sing it, I reflect on the song, I think it is a really important message today in a world where there's a lot of objectification of women goes on. And as part of society, myself, I'm probably guilty of objectifying myself sometimes, so it's an important song for me to sing and to remember um, that I am not just a booty. <laughs> The thing that ties this record together and makes it a really good listen from start to finish is that we have the same backing band for the entire album, which is kind of typical of the soul genre, kind of Stax influenced, Motown influenced, dub tone records kind of vibe. We have an amazing band for the album. Um, Mick and Rory from the Putbacks are our rhythm section, so bass and drums. Um, Dan West from Cooking on Three Burners on guitar. Jake Mason also from Cooking on Three Burners on organ and playing sax. We've got Phil Bernardo on percussion, it's the powerhouse band, and the record sounds great, I'm thrilled. I've worked with Jake a few times before on, on various different things, whether it be live shows or um, you know, different recordings, and so it's always a pleasure working with him, he's a fantastic producer. Um, I think what was different about this particular experience of working with him though was that I had to, a lot of the time, try and translate what was in my head and sing it to him for, you know, I had to sing the horn lines to him and sing different things to him, kind of moving from what was in my brain to actually getting it, you know, played by live instruments. So it was a pretty amazing experience, you know, seeing, he, it was like he could take that from concept to completion, you know, it was, it's quite special. And hats off to Chelsea for being so amazing and pulling it all together, that's what I say.